Thank you very much, Excellencies, authorities, ladies and gentlemen. It's a great honor for me to moderate uh, such an important panel with uh, uh, the most representative railways uh, of uh, the Eurasian platform. I will therefore have the pleasure to call on stage uh, all uh, the participants, uh, starting first of all from Magister Gilbert Ratner, Chairman Supervisory Board uh, ÖBB. Mr. Oleg Pelozerov, General Manager and uh, Chairman of the Board of Joint Stock Company, RGD Russian Railways. Uh, Dr. Bashar Al Malik, CEO of Saudi Railway Company, SAR. Mr. He Seung Na, President, Korea Railroad Research Institute. <laughs> Mr. Vladimir, Vladimir Morozov, Head of the Belarusian Railways. <laughs> Mr. Rolf Janssen, President and CEO of VR Group, Finnish Railways. Mr. Wu Shulin, General Manager of China Civil Engineering Construction Corporation. And Mr. Michele Molinari, CEO of the Molinari Rail Group. So, Dear Magister Tratner, I will allow myself to start from Austria as a guest uh, of this uh, very important uh, conference. Austria is recognized uh, to be a high-tech country and ÖBB is a pioneer in the field of the railway technology. OBB is also one of the most investment-friendly railway companies, a long-standing partner of Austrian research and developed institution in universities and industries. In addition to that, we also read recently that Vienna as a city has been uh, considered again for the 10 cons uh, years uh, without uh, any interruption as the best uh, uh, city for uh, living. As a comprehensive mobility service provider, the ÖBB Group uh, is annually transporting 459 million passengers and uh, transporting 115 million tons of goods to their destinations in an environmentally friendly manner. Rail passengers travel in a particularly climate-friendly manner because 100% of the traction uh, energy, energy comes from renewable energy sources. With around 96% of punctuality, ÖBB is considered one of the most punctual railway in Europe, and this is also considered to be one of the most uh, friendly, customer-friendly company for the passengers in Europe. Through the group, nearly 40,000 employees ensure that 1.3 million passengers and 300,000 goods arrive uh, safely at their destinations every day. Investments in rail infrastructure are an important factor for the country's economic development. ABB contracts create and secure jobs for his partners, and more than 150 million tons of goods are transporting, transported reliably in an environmentally friendly manner every year in the area-wide network in Austria, in Europe, and as far as Asia. Mr. Chairman, of uh, Supervisory Board. What does the Congress mean, therefore, for you and ÖBB? Is this working? I'm very happy to welcome you very cordially here on behalf of ÖBB. And uh, I would like to thank the organizers for organizing this uh, event. Uh, I should also like to thank Dr. Mara as the host for providing us with infrastructure. 
Before we now talk about the expectations, I believe it is quite good for the partnerships that we know who we are dealing with. UPP has uh, a, a truck network of about 5,000 kilometers each day. We run 5,700 trains and transport that number of uh, passengers already mentioned by the previous speaker. We are a major investment company investing 2 billion euro into infrastructure alone, of which 600 million go into maintenance and inspection. 1.5, 1.6 into reinvestments and new build. Of course, we're also talk, uh, thinking strategically as a European company so that our major infrastructural uh, project at present is the Brenner-based tunnel, which uh, covers the gap between Germany and Palermo. Uh, it's a joint project between Italy and Austria, requiring lots of harmonization, but it should be operative by 2026. Another major project, of course, also is the connection of the corridors between the Baltic countries down to the Adriatic, so covering the gap between Klagenfurt and Graz, the so-called Korm uh, Rail, with a 30-kilometer long tunnel and a new simmering based tunnel, which all together should be finished by 2025-2026, cutting travel time by one hour and a half in total. Of course, we aim at very close cooperation with innovation departments, both at universities and the industry to then, in the future, be able to allow for even more investments and more effective maintenance than is possible at present, um, buzzword digitization. So now, of course, we must also see that in Austria, rail is also largely operated with uh, power, so 75% of our network is electrified and we are lucky enough to cover 36 to 38 percent of our energy needs with our own power stations and this is where the next investment project begins. We invest very strongly into existing power stations with digitization, modernization, as well as the expansion of power stations such as power storage stations to cover our own needs and augment that as much as possible. We are also, however, in uh, the, the middle of a major transition because we are, of course, also challenged to be as environmentally friendly as possible, which is why 100% of our power is ecological power. And when we look at certain figures, you know, uh, if you take the car, you produce 15 times that much in CO2 uh, trucks, 21%, and planes, 31%. So all in all, this ecological implementation of cargo and uh, passenger transport in Austria cuts CO2 emissions by 3.5 billion tons. We are a company, as you have mentioned, of 40,000 uh, employees. These 40,000 employees, of course, exist in every railway company in Europe, and we all face uh, this generation uh, turnover. Over the next years, 13,000 uh, employees will retire, and 10,000 will follow them, and that will be a new culture, which is why we invest a lot into our own uh, workshops. So we have 1,800 apprentices so that we get uh, the junior staff, and we also train apprentices for other industrialized uh, companies in Austria. So we are one of the major apprenticeship companies, both for commercial and technological issues. However, it's not just important to train apprentices. We also have an academy near Vienna, a highly modern uh, training site for uh, really specific uh, professions where we expect during the next years to manage this uh, generational transition without any major frictions. And now the buzzword comes in, how can we finance all that infrastructure? Here Austria is lucky enough uh, to have a six-year framework plan which we conclude with the federal government and the Ministry of Finance that is evaluated each year. This provides with a certain planning uh, security for a six-year period, and that is then adjusted each year based on certain key figures regarding punctuality, safety, etc. Sorry, I'm 
need to change position of a microphone. If you had told me earlier, you might have heard me better. So now I've lost uh, my, what I w wanted to say. Now each year we invest 2.9 billion euro into UBB and that for a small country with uh, a track network of 5,000 kilometer is quite a lot, 1.5 into infrastructure and 1.8 into rural material, digitization, etc. Now challenges for modernization, IT implementation for transport and infrastructure would be very important and that would be our future task so that we can also have international partnerships and uh, partners will know what our structure is and what will be the partners for the future for cooperation um, contracts. Thank you so much. Uh, quite an uh, interesting point. Now we try to move uh, a little bit uh, towards to the east uh, and I would like to ask to Mr. Pelozerov Starting from my personal experience, uh, I can say that RGD uh, Russian Railways is uh, currently offering a pretty high quality of the service for the freight transportation, especially if I compare it with the average of the European railways. I can also say, again based on my experience, uh, and not based only on the usage of the high-speed trains uh, Sapsan, that for the passenger trains uh, the level of punctuality is really very good and the level of the services of the train is remarkably improved. In addition to that, the One Belt initiative is making China, Russia and Europe much closer to each other and bringing all their railways towards a much closer cooperation. Which opportunities do you see, Mr. Velozerov, internationally? We think particularly because of the geographic position of Russia, which is the long bridge in between Europe and China, how RGD can help all the railways and can support the market for reducing hindrances and interfaces which uh, we have uh, uh, connecting Europe with China. Спасибо большое. Во-первых, тоже хотел бы начать со слов благодарности организаторам этого конгресса. Был очень сильный. I should like to thank the organizers very much. And I'm sorry, there is no, I can't hear the uh, German interpretation. I'm sorry, we can't have translation since something is wrong with the equipment here. And we must, of course, continue. What I wanted to say was that the perspectives in uh, realizing these transport uh, uh, opportunities are related to the development of um, the economic relations between the European Union and the uh, Asiatic Pacific region. The main idea of the One Build, One Way project is to build the infrastructure for uh, uh, transporting Chinese goods to Europe and vice versa. As we've already heard from these major welcoming addresses, and in order to not repeat what has already been said, I would like to say that this initiative covers about 100 countries providing better opportunities for us as railway companies to share in this proce process. I would also like to mention that the entire scope of uh, the cargo transport amounted to more than $3.5 billion thanks to various factors 
the territory of Russia and uh, the other uh, former republics had a special importance. This territory is very large and wide, so that all that cargo can be transported by rail. There are also various other uh, routes, but uh, the main route is uh, via Russia, Kazakhstan, and uh, Kazakhstan into Europe, and this is very effective. Only a couple of years ago, we could only estimate that about 600 containers would um, go through Russian territory, but today we've really achieved this result. And according to this dynamism, we have seen that uh, we had a 30% growth. And each year now, that growth would be just that, 30%. And that is the result of our joint work. The maximum figures we want to achieve is uh, 2 million containers, even though my colleagues say that we must do more, and probably that figure will go up even more. So what do we provide in Russia as a service? Our task is that by 2025, we will then transport goods from the eastern border to the western border within nine days. And I can say that the speed of cargo transport will be about 1,500 kilometers a day. We know how to do that. And uh, we're working on stepping up that speed even more. So this is why we will construct even more. And... Uh, We have everything already in our heads. As my colleague from the UBB has already said, we focus mainly on uh, building the uh, infrastructure without um, exaggeration, so without doing too much. We can only look back at uh, what we've done in the past, and uh, this will definitely improve the situation of the rail or other means of transport. I would like to stress that this is very important and can be done. For us, it is absolutely necessary to have a unified basis. Uh, the previous speakers all have already spoken about that, and I'm very grateful to them, because many of these things have also already been done, but lots of other things remain to be done in the future. So let me just give you one example. We must cross the borders uh, more quickly. We cover a couple of thousand kilometers, uh, five, 4,000 kilometers uh, in five days, but then we need to stop at the border for two days just to do all the paperwork, which kills all the time achieved. We must uh, put many more efforts into that to just uh, uh, solve this problem. We need a uniform law, and uh, we need to concentrate and uh, find a solution. Another point that has already been raised, the question of ecology. It is not that we're doing badly, but research shows that rail is the best possibility. When we look at the emissions, CO2 emissions, rail causes least. Another question our colleague has already stressed, that's training. We are used to uh, w the jobs we trained for in the past, but now there's new jobs and we need, need to get ready for them. We now need to train for digitization, which will be very important for uh, people working for rail companies in the future. And so therefore we need to get them prepared. Then digitization as a whole. 
blockchain and smart contents, everything that allows us within just a couple of seconds to take decisions and implement them. Here we have uh, billions and billions of dollars uh, that we can save if we take the right approach to digitization. Then the significance of the Kochice Bratislava Vienna project, I believe that that project can and must be a project that uh, can harmonize lots of elements after we've harmonized our standards. Speed, cross-border crossings. We must uh, give maximum attention to this project so that the project can finally then be implemented after all. It will then bring total cargo volumes to a higher level between Europe and Asia and high-speed trains. As we have also already said, the most important thing we have, the most expensive thing we have is time. Time is money and a quick cargo transport from China to Europe with high-quality uh, cargo that can be delivered in just two or three days will assure maximum comfort for our customers. Step up train and rail uh, attractivity, of course. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Velozerov. Uh, information from the market we also see that the paperwork and uh, the customs clearance uh, are sometimes uh, creating some quite difficult obstacles to be overtaken on a daily business I would like to go towards uh, uh, Middle East and I would like to ask uh, to Dr. Bashar Al Malik uh, about uh, the development of the railway solution in Saudi Arabia, which looks very interesting. We think uh, particularly on the new line for the high-speed trains, but also we think for the large investment for the freight transportation that are uh, placed uh, and uh, ongoing in Saudi Arabia. How do you see the chance to implement the integration also between different modalities, especially railways and water solutions, in order to make logistics easier and the exchange of the goods among the different countries faster, cheaper and reliable? Thank you, Thank you so much. Let me start first by... Uh, Thanking the organizer and the hosters for uh, putting up together such uh, an excellent uh, event. Actually, the theme by itself tells a lot. And the representation, whether it's the uh, international uh, uh, unions uh, or countries from all over the world, proves that such uh, integration, such uh, uh, improvement in mobility is, is what everybody is after. Um, Saudi Arabia is, is strategically located uh, to serve, honestly, uh, and connect better the East and the West. We have, uh, thank you, we have uh, a network that uh, was only recently uh, uh, further developed after uh, a lot of efforts and investments being put into uh, into the country. Uh, let me start by introducing maybe a little uh, the Saudi Railway Company where I come from. Uh, the Saudi Railway Company is a state-owned uh, railway company that was only established 12 years ago. Uh, it is fully owned by the public, the Saudi Public Investment Fund, and it did uh, develop uh, the the, uh, the railway network in the kingdom. Uh, we have built thousands of kilometers during the past 10 years, and we are today operating this network uh, all over the kingdom. Uh, we do transport passengers, 
minerals such as phosphate, bauxite, in addition to uh, some dangerous goods like uh, molten sulfur uh, and uh, the uh, normal freight uh, goods. Uh, the, the, uh, the network is, is uh, covering mostly uh, Middle East and the West of the Kingdom. Uh, about 5,900 kilometers exactly of, of uh, rail network. It varies from uh, uh, high-speed network in the western region that was only uh, inaugurated a few months ago into uh, the normal uh, mixed traffic uh, network where the speed gets up to uh, 200 kilometers. Uh, Today, uh, ports are being connected, uh, where we're connecting the eastern uh, port in, in uh, Dammam, and very soon to additional ports in, in uh, the industrial city of Jubail, to the uh, uh, dry port at the uh, center of the country, and specifically the uh, uh, at Riyadh. Uh, uh, the, the, uh, as I said earlier, the, the uh, network uh, serves, when it comes to freight, uh, the goods from the uh, Dammam port all the way to the dry port in the uh, capital city. For minerals, the, the network length is approximately 1,550 kilometers, and we do uh, transfer, as I mentioned earlier, several uh, products. Uh, that goes all the way from the eastern uh, region of the country to the uh, further northern where the Jordanian borders uh, are. Yeah, and we also operate one of the longest trains uh, globally where our mineral trains exceeds three kilometers in length. Uh, we have one of the highest speed uh, networks where the uh, speed gets up to uh, 300 kilometers. And we also operate one of the largest mixed traffic uh, ETCS level two signaling uh, systems. This is what we have today, but the, uh, there are many very uh, uh, massive plans to uh, further develop and expand our network. Uh, one of the strategic projects that would serve uh, as well connecting the east with the west is the Saudi land bridge, where we basically connect the eastern port of the kingdom with the western, uh, with the western ports uh, uh, in the western region, which could facilitate as well uh, uh, an additional route to uh, uh, connecting uh, the east with the west. This is uh, approximately a thousand kilometer in length uh, line that would serve both passengers and freight. Uh, another uh, project that will be announced uh, very soon is connecting the ports in the western region as well. Today those ports are, are not connected by rail and one of our initiatives is to make sure goods can be easily transferred between uh, those ports. Uh, also, uh, one of the challenges we face today is that we have a very old line that is over 70 years old uh, with different standards, different uh, uh, characteristics that is to be connected with the modern uh, a line that was only uh, completed a few years ago. Uh, this connection will take place at the capital city of Riyadh, and it will ensure uh, full uh, integration between the different networks in the kingdom. Uh, last but not least, speaking with standardization and the integration between countries and border crossing is the uh, Gulf countries uh, connectivity where six countries would become connected by a rail. We have already started uh, the construction activities on the Saudi part of, of this network, and we are uh, uh, moving forward with it. Our colleagues will, will soon start their activities as well to connect all six countries 
within this uh, region, standardizations and, and uh, uh, customs clearance, border crossings are all subjects that has been discussed and agreed between the countries. This will also ensure that further ports can be connected within this uh, region. Again, just a quick map to show our uh, uh, network, uh, along with future uh, uh, lines to be executed within the next uh, 20 years as well. Uh, this more or less wraps my, my quick introductory uh, presentation to the network inside the kingdom. Uh, a lot of uh, successes took place during the few uh, last years. Many challenges we face as well. Maybe uh, the, the strategic location of the country comes with many uh, advantages, but uh, some challenges as well. Supply chain is one of the uh, uh, difficulties that we face. Knowledge transfer and localization of, of uh, the, the uh, manufacturing especially is, is something we are focusing on nowadays. The environment, the heat, the sand that you can imagine, uh, unlike uh, snow where snow melts over here, sand does not. You need to physically uh, clear it from the network. But a lot, a lot of uh, good things are happening. Uh, we welcome the international community to invest, to work uh, side by side with us. And uh, uh, we hope that we can become very soon part uh, when it comes to the railway infrastructure to connect the east uh, with the west. Thank you. Thank you very much. It looks uh, very challenging and interesting. Now let's take a railway fly up to the Far East, uh, to Korea. And I would like to ask uh, to Mr. He Seung-na about uh, the possibility to connect uh, Korea. We see from the market more and more uh, growing uh, uh, requests for developing solution using uh, the sea uh, and rail solution through the port of Vladivostok, connecting Korea and therefore also connecting Japan. Uh, I also had the pleasure uh, during the big conference uh, host in Sochi in uh, October last year to hear about uh, the plan for the extension of the Trans-Siberian route uh, after uh, Vladivostok up to Busan. I would like to ask you, therefore, which are the perspectives that you can see according to these uh, new international possibilities and new extension of railway possibilities? Yeah. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, I am Mr. Na the, the, from uh, the Korea. Uh, good morning. Uh, today, I would like to uh, introduce the East Asia Railway community uh, for a peace and prosperity on the Korean Peninsula. And then, uh, I'm going to uh, propose some opinion to develop the, uh, the East Asia Railway integration. Uh, as you know, uh, there was uh, the summit talks uh, uh, the between the North and South Korea uh, last year. The three times between the, uh, the North and South Korea and the one time uh, between the uh, North Korea and the USA. Uh, and then we expect a dramatic uh, improvement of, of relationship between South Korea and North Korea, as well as North Korea and the United States which will uh, eventually uh, lead to the peaceful environment on Korean Peninsula, making a uh, commitment uh, to creating the peace and prosperity in uh, Northeast Asia. Uh, after uh, summit talks, uh, we had an opportunity uh, to uh, join in uh, organization for the Corporation of Railways, the OSJD, and then uh, we had a uh, joint survey project of North Korea Railways uh, the, uh, between the North and South Korea. 
Uh, and then uh, we conducted the ground, grounding breaking ceremony uh, to connect North and South Korea Railway as shown in this figure. Recently, uh, the congratulatory address on the National Liberation Day, uh, President Moon Jae-in in Korea uh, proposed the railroad community in East Asia at his keynote speech at the UN General Assembly uh, on September 26th last year. A uh, railroad community in East Asia will play the role as the energy community and the economic community, uh, which will uh, further serve the start point toward the uh, multilateral uh, peacetime security body, as well as the main artery for mutual prosperity in uh, Northeast Asia. Future logistics, uh, future logistics uh, expect that the competition in the 21st global times will not be made in the structure of a company versus company or uh, countries versus countries anymore, but will be changed into the structure of a network versus network. Uh, when uh, East Asian railway network is uh, completed to connect uh, Eurasia to Pacific Ocean, uh, the large contribution will be made in expansion of cooperation with the land economic blocks as well as economic cooperation between uh, South and North Korea uh, due to uh, the saving in the transportation time and cost. The, for example, it takes 30 days uh, from uh, Korea to Moscow on the sea now, but uh, will take only uh, 15 days on the rails. Uh, therefore, uh, Korea uh, needs to suggest a new uh, contact point to connect one belt, one road of China and Russia's East Asia uh, policy, uh, which have recently become uh, topics. Uh, East Asia is the region where uh, the global passenger and freight demand is uh, concentrated. Uh, as uh, likes this figure. Uh, this uh, data is from the UIC. Uh, it is demand of transport logistics uh, in Asia Pacific markets. Uh, the, the horizontal axis is passenger. The, the, the vertical is for the freight traffic demands. Uh, as you know, uh, the, uh, the demand of uh, the East Asia, uh, the, the, uh, the freight and uh, the freight is uh, uh, the passenger is uh, very uh, is sufficient. Uh, there are uh, two economic blocks in the Korean Peninsula. The one is uh, the East Sea, uh, the Rim economic block, and the second is uh, the West Sea uh, Rim economic block. In case of uh, the East Sea economic block. Uh, the, as above mentioned, Russia Railways uh, President, uh, the Russia implemented TSR seven-day project uh, for high-speed cargo rails in order to shorten uh, Trans-Siberian Railway logistics transportation time uh, from two weeks uh, to one week until uh, 2025 or 2030. Uh, so, uh, Korea Peninsula uh, can make the, uh, the one day uh, the project uh, and then we can uh, combine the TSR seven day and the TS, uh, uh, TKR one day. So uh, the Korea needs to, Korea and Russia needs to uh, suggest uh, innovational TKR TSR eight day project. I think that it will be uh, the, the innovation, uh, the global logis logistic uh, transportation project. 
Uh, as soon as it's bigger now, the China is connected with uh, 29,000 km per hour uh, high-speed railway network. Uh, China high-speed rail network has been being operated uh, too close to uh, the Korean Peninsula already. Uh, there is a high possibility uh, that the project to connect China and uh, Korean Peninsula uh, with high-speed rail will become a topic. One day, uh, living zone, life zone, will be possible not only in Korean Peninsula, but also in Seoul, Beijing. 1A Seoul, Beijing line will take only five hours. The time to uh, uh, prepare uh, Northeast Asia high-speed rail construction and industrial cooperation uh, is coming to meet uh, North Asia uh, railway community. Uh, this is uh, uh, the, the significance of a joint railway project between North and South Korea. Uh, first is uh, discovering new growth engine for South Korea economy, and the second is guiding growth and the transition of North Korea economy. Uh, the third, uh, the finally, is the spreading the peace and prosperity in East Asia and the Pacific region. Uh, thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Na, for your uh, explanation. Uh, just very quickly before to go to the next question to Mr. Morozov, I would like to invite everybody. We have a very restrictive watch there, <laughs> which is uh, giving us the time, and we are railway people, so be on time is uh, the first uh, uh, necessity. Mr. Morozov, uh, Belarus uh, is showing uh, an extremely careful following of the streams of the development of the uh, one, rail uh, one Belt Initiative. We are thinking uh, particularly of the huge investment uh, of the huge logistics uh, uh, platform in Minsk. What are the plan of the Belarusian railways for supporting the new logistics center, especially towards Europe and the 1435 territories? Which challenges you, uh, and prospect do you see uh, in the background of increasing volumes of container traffic? And last, will you see also alternative corridors as has been shown with the project line towards uh, Vienna with the 1520 gauge uh, as alternative to the current uh, magistral line via Brest Malashevice? Ladies and gentlemen, well, I'm very happy that I can speak before you today and uh, to discuss the uh, geog geography of uh, the situation. Obviously, we are uh, concerned with the same issue. And of course, the railways are the future. And as uh, the other speakers have already said, I can only concur with that. And of course, we have to deal with strategic uh, questions, not only at the local, but also international level. I would like to thank you very much on behalf of my company for inviting us and letting us participate in this conference. Well, it's about, about uh, as you said, about the One Belt, uh, One Road initiative. We're highly interested in this project, of course. And, and uh, one million containers from China to Europe a year. This uh, was met with skepticism in the beginning, but the reality uh, in uh, 2011 at the time was different and difficult. But now uh, time has gone by, and as you have said, uh, things have changed. And we're now 
uh, seeing that this uh, development is in fact implementable. In uh, 2018, as we've already heard, the number of uh, container tra transfer trains between Europe and China has increased. We had 43,000 containers, and now we're faced with uh, tasks that are definitely implementable. We will implement these projects, and it will take some time, but we will do so. Uh, these are uh, all questions, as Mr. Bilozorov has said, we have to resolve uh, jointly. Between Europe and Asia, we see that it's obviously impossible for any single country to do anything uh, going solo. It's a big challenge to co cooperate together, but I can assure you that the 2015-20 uh, project is uh, about to ensure the interoperability of containers and with the participation, of course, of the neighboring countries. Since uh, 2013, Kazakhstan, Belarusia, Belarus, and uh, Russia have been cooperating in this field together. In these years, uh, uh, this work has been stepped up, and we have really created a high-quality product that uh, ensures a high standard of service for our customers. Again, I'm talking about the 1520 project. And uh, technical standardization uh, has been much improved through cooperation, as I said, international cooperation between the countries concerned. We have concluded more than 50 uh, contracts uh, with companies and this has in fact led to uh, a, a lack of uh, rail cars, so we are actually some, sometimes short of rolling stock for the transport between Europe and China. Uh, uh, trains are s very often stopped in Brest, uh, but we do have problems sometimes at the borders there. Uh, we have too long waiting times, and this is a, a joint task uh, that uh, needs to be resolved. We have already attained, attained uh, more than 100 kilometers, um, in some cases even 200 kilometers per day. But developments are still too slow, I admit, especially as uh, uh, long distance travel is concerned. No, in order, now we're concerned, of course, with improving uh, the level of a service performance. And for this, we need a joint strategy. We have already taken some steps in order to improve uh, the uh, joint activities of uh, railway companies. We've concluded contracts with China in order to improve contacts between the countries. 
Later on, uh, Austrians have also joined in uh, this multilateral uh, co cooperation. And? We, but of course, uh, this uh, also concerns technical improvements. But again, uh, it will take some time, the Russian railways, together with the Polish uh, railways. I, I think I've done good work. Regarding uh, the um, wide gauge project, and we're now uh, working on other infrastructure projects and the construction of additional uh, potentials. Not only the improvement uh, of uh, the uh, the border station of Brest uh, between Poland and uh, Russia, but, but we're also investing in other uh, border stations. And in one month, we will uh, inaugurate another border station, which uh, will, I think, uh, greatly facilitate container transport. Finally, I would like to say that we, uh, all of us in this uh, business, are not only competitors, but with your partners as well. Uh, because the projects in, uh, involve all of us, and in order to succeed, cooperation is absolutely necessary uh, for the greater good, so to speak. And I think there's a lot of work for all companies in order to make uh, to, to work, but also to make money uh, together. And I think all this will bring us uh, closer together. Thank you very much. Mr. Janssen, <coughs> let's go to Finland. Finland is uh, clearly showing uh, how the integration between the rail and water modality is very important and representing and use potential because Finland is also one of the countries from where the 1520 network is starting towards the Far East. So looking at the geographical position, uh, Finland appears as a very important gateway and cross-modality point for Scandinavia and for the Northern Europe towards Russia and towards China. How do you see, especially under this perspective, the role of the Finnish railways develop in the Eurasian economy? For, first of all, thank you very much for having the opportunity to, to participate in this panel discussion. Uh, it's a very relevant topic from a VR Group Finnish railway perspective. And uh, of course, particularly because uh, we are very much, particularly from a railway perspective, interconnected uh, with t towards east. Uh, basically, more than 40% of, of our cargo flows are, are, are cross-border together with Russia. And then we also have the Allegro and Tolstoy trains, both to St. Petersburg and Moscow. Uh, th this topic of today is not Going to change the slide. Uh, thank you very much. Okay, now, now it's working. Uh, th this topic of today's panel discussion is not only important for, for Finnish railways, it, it's also very important for Finland and uh, rail in general. Uh, if, if we look at our country's uh, finan financials, ba basically 40% of our GDP is, is exports. And then if, if you look at the products uh, that we export, uh, the bulk, the clear majority of that is uh, heavy products such as pulp and paper, metal and chemicals. Uh, and actually, if, if you look at uh, trends behind these figures, you see that the importance of these heavy products are increasing over time. Uh, that you, you can see, for example, by looking at the price per ton exported, and, and there's uh, 
lowering trend. There's a 12% decreasing in, in, in this number over the past three years. Finland is also quite disconnected from the rest of the world, and, and that you can see from our logistics costs. So we have uh, around 10% of logistics costs uh, of, of GDP, whereas I think the, the relevant number for, for Europe in, in average is something like 6% only. Uh, this means that uh, rail, cargo rail, has great opportunity in Finland. Uh, it, it's a very well suitable uh, environment, and, and that's why we have a 30% market share of all logistics is actually rail, which I think is more than doubled compared to, to Europe in, in average. Uh, and, and there's also very strong growth in cargo rail over the past couple of years. We've grown since 2015 with some 5 plus percent uh, per year in tons. And, and here we come to, to the potential traffic between uh, Finland, Russia and China. I think this is uh, really a great uh, opportunity to, to, to continue this growth. Maybe one sentence about passenger traffic. Uh, of, of course, as in all countries, uh, the rail network is really important and, and has some historical impact on Finland. I found that there's one town that is uh, disconnected to rail with uh, uh, 50,000 inhabitants in, in Finland. All others are even smaller than that if you're not connected to rail. Then over to the route uh, via Russia to China, and, and we have currently some five to eight trains per month going to, to China, using both the route directly via Russia and then uh, via Russia to Kazakhstan and, and China. Uh, it's primarily pulp and uh, also some timber products which are exported to, to China. Uh, there's uh, great discussions, a lot of activities, a lot of service providers, and, and uh, also a lot of discussions with customers currently uh, regarding this route. And, and that's not a surprise, uh, considering that uh, what, what has been mentioned several times, I think the, it, it, this route is even quite cost competitive, particularly, of course, to inland China, and then uh, due, due to the, the very uh, the, uh, comparing to, to sea freight, how, how fast it is with, with ten, 10 plus days uh, re reaching China. There's still a lot of opportunities still unexplored. And uh, here I would look at new product groups. Uh, we had, for example, a shipment of plywood to southern Korea last year. Uh, very interesting. Uh, a lot of more opportunities when it comes to metal products, food, and machinery products, etc. Uh, we also see opportunity how to connect the rest of the northern countries, Sweden and, and Norway, to the same route. Uh, we view the Finnish route as being complementary to the Central European route due to our uh, infrastructure and, and also uh, uh, efficient uh, port connections to Europe. Uh, we also see gradually increasing flows from China to Finland, and there's a lot of discussions uh, among all regarding cars and, and also very interesting uh, uh, animal fats fat to, to be used for biodiesel production in, in Finland. So it's a great opportunity. Then if the opportunity is out there, what, what should we do to, to capture it? And I, I basically uh, conclude that there are three major things we should do. One is not only to serve customers with uh, transportation, but also with logis logistic solutions. And, and then I come back to the topic of cooperation uh, between the companies in, in the supply chain, but maybe also connecting then different transportation modes 
uh, road uh, port operations, etc. We have a lot of these uh, solutions that we provide to our clients, and particularly when it comes to China, I see great opportunity in offering one plant the opportunity not only to go via rail to a harbor and then uh, with sea freight to China, but also pending on the exact product, pending on the time criticalness, uh, and depending on the destination, then allocate some of the uh, tonnages to, to rail and then go direct to China. For example, if you look at the exports of uh, pulp to China, only less than 4% goes via rail today. The rest goes uh, via sea freight, so great opportunity there. Uh, I'm, I'm a strong believer in digital products, both when it comes to customer service, but also when it comes to efficiency. Uh, here I particularly want to market uh, electric, uh, electronic documentation, kind of paperless uh, logistics that we have uh, very strongly together with Russian railways. And uh, during this year, I, I would say the, all the major product flows will, will be paperless. This should be extended throughout the journey to, to China. Uh, there, there's, of course, better services to customers as well by uh, uh, giving uh, more punctual forecasts by allocating resources according to that and uh, having uh, the opportunity, opportunity to offer real online data of, of uh, how, how you can serve the, the logistics uh, solutions to the customers. Uh, also, marketplaces are upcoming, uh, kind of bundling demand and supply together and, and making this as uh, transparent as possible. Finally, I want to conclude about what has been discussed a lot here today, uh, creating common practices for the U European uh, China uh, belt. Uh, there, there's uh, uh, a, a lot to be done. Of course, uh, paperless uh, transportation, uh, do, creating uniform standards, uh, transport management systems, et, et cetera, et cetera. I also don't want to emphasize the importance of investing in infrastructure and taking away all the bottlenecks. Uh, I, I will conclude by uh, uh, stating a, a Finnish politician who uh, during, I think, last fall traveled uh, uh, in, in Europe via train, an, an interrail trip and he was uh, furious after arriving back to Finland, stating that all the ticketing systems, all, all the cargo, etc., uh, border procedures were different when you go from one country to another. And he concluded that uh, what was done in the air transport industry in 1944 uh, that was the Ch Chicago Convention, which initiated these kind of uniform global standards and uh, said that the railway industry should take the same step. Of course, th this is not fair to compare with, with uh, the air transportation, but uh, I th still think it's an important kind of mental vision for all of us. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Lianson. We need to create a common practice. We need to eliminate the bottleneck. And when we build a new infrastructure, we need to be able to use them fully. I would like to pass the, the next question to Mr. Wu Shulin. Uh, recently, I utilize uh, a lot the high-speed uh, lines in China. And I visited a lot of uh, railway terminal, intermodal terminal in China. And I must say that uh, the development and the speed on which everything has been built is absolutely much more than impressive. 
And for that is a great compliment and a great wish that uh, in all the platform, Eurasian platform, we can follow this example. Nevertheless, what we heard from the market is that there are still a lot of questions which we partly heard also from the previous speakers about uh, customs clearance problematic and some administrative hindrances and also problems uh, connected to the harmonization among uh, all the value system. We would like to uh, listen to your opinion about all these possibilities and a little bit problems. Okay, thank you. Uh, it's my great honor to be invited to the International Railway Congress and to share with you my understanding on the impact of the railway on the social economy. Uh, first of all, please allow me to briefly introduce our company because I think uh, it's very easy to confuse the name of uh, Chinese companies, CRCC, CREC, CRRC, CC, CC. <laughs> so please remember, we are CRCC. <laughs> So CRCC is a state-owned enterprise of China. It is listed in both Shanghai and Hong Kong stock market. As one of the most powerful and the largest integrated construction groups in China, and even in the world, ranking the 58th among the Fortune Globe 500 in 2008, and the 14th among the China 500 in 2017, Team, as well as the 14th among ENR's top 250 global contractors in 2018. It's one of the largest engineering construction in China. At present, CRCC's business covers project contracting, survive, survey and design consulting, real estate development, investment, equipment manufacturing, material logistics, financial services, and emerging industries. We have presence in 32 provinces and regions in China and 116 countries in the world. CRCC has developed from the construction contracting to a full industry chain with scientific research, planning, survey, design, construction, supervision, maintenance, operation, investment, and uh, financing, and has the ability to provide one-stop integrated service for the customers. In the recent years, in accordance with the Belt and Road Initiative put forward by Chinese President Xi Jinping, CRCC has continuously expanded its overseas business and actively participated in the construction of projects around the world. Secondly, I would like to state my speech, the impact of railway on the social economy with the example of the Ankara to Istanbul high-speed railway phase two project which we built. As we all know, Ankara and Istanbul are the two most important cities in Turkey, namely the political and economic centers of Turkey. The high-speed railway line between the two cities is 533 kilometers in length and is divided into three phases. The second phase project we participated in was the middle section with a total length of about 158 kilometers. By joining hands with one another Chinese company and two Turkish local companies, we stood out from the international tendering and built a high-speed rail that adopts the Europe standard and provides service, including financing, construction, and partial design. This railway is the first high-speed railway built by Chinese companies overseas. It is jointly funded by China's Exim Bank and the Europe Invest Bank. In 2005, we were awarded the project. In 2006, we signed the contract with our client. In 2007, the project financing agreement was entered into. In 2008, the construction of the project commenced, and in 2014, the line was opened to operation. 
Each cornerstone bears the achievement of the effort we made and is a demonstration of win-win results. CRCC has constructed a total length of 158 kilometers, 40 percent of which are bridges and tunnels. This section bears the largest quantities of works and the most difficult conditions. With this railway, traveling from Ankara to Istanbul only takes three and a half hours, greatly reduced from the original 10 hours. In the meantime, the successful completion of the project has also led to rapid development of cities along the railway line and has significantly boosted the employment and surrounding population. As the old Chinese saying goes, if you want to get rich, build roads first. I think it also applies here. Railway enjoys advantages in that it can promote urban transformation and industry upgrade, improve industry cluster effect, promote the diversified development of urban economy and utilize transportation to develop future industries. Railways is currently a catalyst for urban development and plays a critical role in the expansion of the urban functions and upgrading of industries. Railway can promote development far more rapid and advanced than other modes of transportation. Therefore, railway has a greater role in driving urban development. Among railways, high-speed railway can greatly improve the overall or technical level of transportation industry in the region along the route, optimize the regional transportation structure, transform the mode of transportation, and form a new transportation pattern with high-speed railway at its cornerstone. High-speed railway boosts technical advantages, which can enable to provide all-weather, safe, large volume, fast, punctual and uh, environmentally friendly service. The more developed the infrastructure is, the more capital, technical and the talents the region can attract. The construction and the development of high-speed railway can great improve the transportation in mountain north and uh, improvised areas, improve the investment environment and promote a more open regional economy. China's first high-speed railway, Beijing to Tianjin Intercity Railway, opened in 2008, marking China's official entry into the era of high-speed railway. Since then, China's high-speed rail, railway development has begun to take off quickly. At percent, the total length of high-speed railway in China has reached about 30,000 kilometers. With the acceleration of high-speed railway construction, the transit time between cities of different scales and levels in China has been shortened, and the flexibility of China's industrial layout has been improved. The efficiency of market resources has been enhanced, and the allocation of human resources has been promoted, which deepens the degree of regional integration. Our company, CRCC, has built about half of the 30,000 kilometers. We are willing to share the technology and experience gained during the construction process with the world colleagues through technical cooperation or project cooperation. Finally, please allow me, on behalf of CRCC, to express my sincere gratitude and respect to the organizer to, of this Congress. While undertaking more top quality engineering projects, we shall remain committed to our own mission and the responsibilities to give back to the society and benefit the people of the host countries. In the future, with concerted effort, I believe we can further develop the high-speed rail industry. With more advanced technology and innovation, high-speed railway can bring us a better world. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Your presentation shows more how much railway has been always the locomotive 
of the changement of the industry, logistics, and demography especially. I would like to place the last question to the last presentation. We will eat a little bit of uh, time to the lunch uh, to Mr. Uh, Molinari. Uh, as a consultant and railway specialist, uh, you are analyzing all the railway infrastructure, technologies, and capacities, and I would say also capabilities. In consideration of all the very interesting information we received during this panel, and really thank you because it was very instructive, uh, what are the technological needs the railway should quickly adopt for getting more competitive? Very easy said, how can we make railway easy to be accessed? Thank you very much uh, for the opportunity uh, to uh, present uh, the project uh, today at this uh, Congress. And um, I will try to answer your question as good as possible today. I will also try to uh, not extend the time too much into the lunch. First, a few words uh, to myself. Uh, my day job is uh, the, to be president and CEO of uh, Molinari Rail Group. And I'm also the uh, uh, member of the Swiss Rail Management Board. I'm uh, the speaker of uh, a joint initiative of Swiss Rail and uh, the German uh, railway industry with regard to the Bioceanico project, which I'm going uh, to present you later on. Uh, of course, uh, the technological development, to come back to your question, uh, availability, reliability are the key issues uh, when we uh, think that safety is inherent and key and normally there, but the reliability and availability are key issues to uh, further improve and uh, foster uh, railway operation and uh, usage. And these are uh, two, three points which we focus at uh, Molinari. Now to come uh, to the center of uh, my presentation today. What we have uh, been seeing and uh, presented by the different speakers today which, uh, who are with me here on the panel are, is the integration of Asia and Europe by rail, uh, which I think is a great achievement and I would like to congratulate all the railway companies uh, here present today. Uh, in other uh, regions of the world, uh, the same is happening, as we have seen in Saudi Arabia today, which I think also their uh, big uh, deal has been done. And uh, if we uh, focus on Latin America, uh, especially in South America, similar uh, initiatives are taking place. We see also uh, similar in initiatives, for example, in Africa. Yeah, Tanzania, Ethiopia, etc., are uh, great examples of this. In uh, Latin America, uh, especially Bolivia and its president Evo Morales, uh, are promoting uh, a so called Corredor Ferroviario Bioceanico de Integración, which is a, a railway link. Uh, from uh, Santos uh, in Brazil at the Atlantic to Peru, uh, Ilo Peru uh, on the Pacific. Uh, you could call it also a, a South American land bridge, la a rail land bridge so far, if you want. Uh, the countries involved are first of all Brazil, Bolivia and Peru, but the adjacent uh, countries like uh, Argentina, Paraguay and uh, Uruguay are very well uh, involved in this and integrated. And the idea is uh, to improve the uh, logistics and transport uh, capabilities between the countries and to foster and improve the econ economic integration of all these countries. And uh, this is not new. Uh, if you look back a hundred and more years, these countries uh, were uh, very heavy uh, adopters of railway, especially for the transportation of minerals. Uh, what is the reason to do that? Uh, first of all, the uh, Latin America and South America exports a lot of goods, especially to China, and imports uh, also some goods, but not as much as they export. Especially Brazil, uh, 
Paraguay, Uruguay, and uh, Argentina, etc., uh, use or dependent there on the usage of uh, the ships uh, going out from the Atlantic side around the southern tip of Latin America uh, towards China. Usually, uh, this takes uh, the south way 58 days or a little bit more, and through the Panama Canal, uh, 67 days. Uh, with this uh, rail land bridge, uh, the idea is to shorten it very much to about 42 days, which is a huge uh, gain in productivity, and especially to improve the, uh, uh, the competitiveness of uh, these countries' economies. Therefore, um, different uh, projects have been discussed. Uh, how to do this. Uh, one first idea was to go through the northern side of Brazil. Uh, and uh, the project uh, which we are discussing now is the central one through uh, which uh, Brazil, Bolivia, and Peru. Uh, there is another one uh, just being promoted by the new president of Brazil, uh, which uh, would uh, go through Brazil, Paraguay, Argentina to Chile. Uh, some people say that these projects are competitive to each other's. I see them more uh, complementary because the distances between each other are thousands of kilometers. So we speak of completely different uh, parts of these uh, huge countries which uh, would be integrated. The effect would be the same on all of them. Um, the, uh, the discussion between the countries is going on uh, since about uh, 2014, and uh, the great progress has uh, been made already just by uh, this, the discussion of how to cross the border more efficient. The very same issues we are discussing here between China, Russia, and Europe uh, are there uh, present as well. And uh, of course, I think the idea to uh, uh, take the example of the uh, airline industry or the air industry and uh, extend it or take an example of it for the railway industry would find a great adoption here in Latin America too. So the multilateral uh, cooperation is here being uh, pushed uh, quite a lot. There is a joint political will. And um, they are trying to find a very pragmatic approach to uh, all this. Uh, it has to be seen that also branch lines are being discussed to uh, connect the different uh, uh, parts of Brazil, uh, Argentina, and Paraguay to this, uh, to this line. The, uh, if we come back to Bolivia itself, uh, we have uh, uh, old uh, existing railway lines, uh, metric uh, uh, with gauge, like in Brazil as well. And um, whereas in Peru, for example, we have a standard gauge. The discussion has also led to a convergence of standards, whereas Peru has agreed just recently to uh, use the meter gauge as well to ensure the connectivity to Brazil right away. And the whole uh, uh, network, either the existing or the new railway lines, which uh, would have to be built, shall be uh, uh, upgraded to 25 tons axle load and uh, 100 kilometers of speed for the rail traffic. Uh, rail would be the predominant, uh, uh, sorry, fr uh, freight would be the predominant uh, use of these lines, of course, but also passenger uh, trains should uh, be used. If you look at this, um, at this uh, map uh, of Bolivia, the green line uh, already exists and is in operation. Uh, the gray line as well is being uh, just uh, built and finished now to start the export of uh, urea from uh, uh, Bolivia to Brazil. It can only be done uh, by rail, uh, by uh, truck it would be uh, almost impossible, so this has been uh, improving and uh, uh, 
uh, helping a lot in this development. The red, the blue, and the yellow line uh, in Peru uh, are to be built, or especially the blue ones, the blue section, and part of the red section to be uh, improved. These railways have more than 100 years, and I just recently toured part of Bolivia, and I was astonished to see how more than 100 years ago our grandfathers were able to put the railway line into very, very difficult uh, uh, geography and uh, environments. And we take this as an example to find uh, new, uh, new lines uh, through this. Now, what uh, we are discussing right now uh, is uh, that the Bolivian government uh, requested offers to build uh, the so-called interconnection line between the lowlands around uh, Santa Cruz and the highlands uh, in Cochabamba, uh, Oruro. Uh, this sounds easy, is in reality very difficult because the lowlands are at about 300 meters above sea level and uh, the highland in Cochabamba is about uh, 3,500 meters above sea level. So we have about 70 kilometers to do more than 3,000 uh, meters. Uh, right now, uh, we have uh, presented an offer as well as others to do that, and uh, the Bolivian government is uh, uh, discussing how to proceed uh, with this. We hope that uh, within this year, uh, first a uh, uh, decision will be taken because uh, the, the key point is to the whole uh, rail land bridge is this interconnection line which does not yet exist because it's extremely uh, difficult uh, to build. And there, Swiss, uh, Germans, and of course, Austrian technology and engineering capabilities are, uh, shall be at work, among others, uh, of course. Here, just uh, a few impressions of how this looks. This is a very difficult uh, terrain. Uh, the Andes are not only high, they shake quite a lot as well. So uh, the task uh, of the engineers is to find the right combination between uh, normal line, track uh, tunnels, and of course, uh, bridges. Because the idea is, uh, especially from Bolivian side, to reach by rail the ocean. The, uh, Bolivia is a landlocked country, and uh, for their uh, economic development, they need uh, this line. And it would also help to integrate the whole uh, South American uh, continent with uh, China and at least, uh, at the least, also uh, Europe. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Molinari. I would like to thank a lot uh, everybody, all the speakers, for their cooperation. We have seen uh, Saudi Arabia, example, Korea, Russia, China, Europe, and South America. We can conclude that railway is a great family among sand, rock, snow, and water. And uh, let's uh, make together the easy access to the railway in order to make our job more and more successful altogether. Thank you very much.